Evening everybody. I was just having a look at some of the stuff I've got and I realised I've got an absolute pile of binoculars so I thought I'd just do a little video about the sort of binoculars that you, you, you may find being used by the British forces during the war. Um, a couple of pairs I have are definite British issue ones. See the, the two at the front here, uh, these are made by a company called Kershaw and they're both binocular prism number two mark twos uh can't really make it out but it's not very clear but these ones are dated 1940 let me see these are 1941 i think very hard to read it very very faint these ones there's that much pitting you can make it the 1904 but I don't know the the full year, 1940 something. Um, <clears throat> I mean, these very easy to come by. These types of binoculars. You got, I see. So you've got the Kershaw ones, and the ones at the back are very similar, very similar in appearance. And these are the ones made by Taylor Hobson. Right, Taylor Hobson. But these are marked uh, binocular prism number two mark twos. And these are both dated. This one is let's see if I can see that very clear. It's 1943. And this one, which looks like it's been attacked by a tin of brasso, which wasn't me. <laughs> it was like this when I got it. Um, but these are 1941. Really good uh, clear optics on these as well. Um, they're six power uh, magnification, which is a really good um, level of power for binoculars. So they're all clearly marked. Oh, crow's foot marks everywhere. Right on the tops. Uh, now what I have heard actually, now that I've noticed that is the difference between the wartime ones and ones that's been refurbished. Now, I'm not 100% sure if this is true, but the ones that's been refurbished have had the screws replaced um, and they fitted these ones that's marked in red. Uh, could be correct, I'm not sure. But if I look at these ones, it's a similar thing. Let me just turn these upside down so you can see them. These have still got the original looking screws. And these ones have um, red screws instead. And what I like about these ones are they all have what's called graticles inside them. Let's see if I can zoom in on this. I'll pick up the pair up, it's not very clear. Apologies for that. Right, you can see them in there. So, grackles is just a set of lines right, inside the eyepiece. Right, you can use them for measuring distances. Let's try these ones, these ones are a lot better, a lot clearer. There we go. Right, that's what grackles are. Now my understanding is the center line is meant meant to represent the height of a six foot man at a hundred meters. Not hundred percent sure, but this is what I heard. Uh, and that's <clears throat> meant to aid you in judging distances. So if you see a guy off in the distance, you're wondering how far away he is, you can use the grackles. Um, to work out who, how far away he is. The same with armoured vehicles. Apparently the width between um, the lines is meant to represent the width of a tank at certain distances. Uh, but something I'm going to have to obviously read up on and find out about. So I'll just pop these down. I'll show you a couple of other sets that I have. As I say, these ones, they're all clear issued British ones. And I've got a couple of other sets 
the unusual ones that I've picked up. Let's turn these over. All right. Now these are marked. They're made in France. Now, I don't know how to pronounce the French properly, so apologies if you're French and you hear this. But it's uh, D-E-R-A-I-S-M-E. I presume it's Deresme. Paris. And they're quite clearly marked with uh, crossfoot stamps. There's no year mark, uh, no no year on it, but the only markings are the crossfoot marks, the place name in uh, in France and Paris. And it's got P. Let's see. P one seven seven there. And in the centre here, in English, it says made in France. Alright, and I've got a couple that are very similar to them. Alright, again, all picked up in um, markets. All of these picked up in markets. Um, I don't know how they've ended up here. These are the same. Uh, Leroy, L-E-R-O-I. Paris. I assume that's a 55 or a 22, I'm not sure. And on this side, crow's foot mark, and it's 8 by 25. And again on the front, another crow's foot mark. Now, what I've noticed also with these. Because I've got two pairs that are similar. It looks like, instead of using a regular binocular strap, it looks like they've used a rifle pull-through. Like they've took the weight off and they've just used a regular rifle pull-through as an X-strap because you can see there is the loops that you get on the rifle pull-through for the flannelette or the, the wire gauze. I see another set here, Prismex. I don't know. There's no markings, no crow's foot markings on them either. But the they all, those two or three pairs came together. Prismex Paris, and these are really clear. I do like these ones. And another oddity that I have is this. <clears throat> now my granddad had this. And he gave me this oh, years ago. I'm talking, this was about 1989, I think. And I've had it ever since. And this is, I mean, that's why it looks a mess at the minute. Because I used this when I was in the army. I had this with me. I mean, it's got all sorts of rubbish on it. I'm going to have to take it all off and correct it. But it's a monocular. British ones, uh, six power magnification. You can see here what I've got actually is a an eye cup from a SUSAT. I've got a grenade ring pull, and I've got the old army green string, and I used to carry that round my neck. And I've no idea where my granddad got this, because um, see my other granddad he he was in the navy, uh, but the granddad that I got this from. Um, yeah, he never actually served in the war because he was a shipbuilder, and so it was a preserved occupation. So he was here building ships in the shipyards during the war. So I don't know where he got this, but it was always in his shed. So I'm assuming he's somebody's either gave him it or he's picked it up after the war, you know. And I carried on using it. It says that I took this with me to Bosnia. I served in Bosnia and Kosovo, but I had this with me as well. So it just goes to show that the kit might be old, but it's perfectly usable. And I, I just continued to use it.
So the only thing I've done is got some leather, rewrapped that the outside, because there was nothing there. That, that the actual covering was totally away, so it was just the bare metal. Um, so I've covered it with this brown leather. Uh, I think it's done a good job. But one of the things I'm going to look for is uh, the replacement eye cups that you can get. So I'm going to take this rubber one off, put on the proper one. I'll obviously get rid of the ring pull as well. And make it look as it should be, instead of how it was and and how how it was when I used it. Right, and let's look up here. This is a must. If you've got binoculars, you wanna you're gonna have to look after them, right? I don't care how much it's gonna cost you, but invest in one of these. Right, the cases for them. Right. They're going to protect your binoculars. Because if you look at some of the... Let me see if I can find one. If you look at some of the ones... With the eye cups... You know, you're going to find them in alright condition. But you're also going to find them... If I can find one here... Nope. Excuse me. You're gonna find them like this, or or worse. These bakelite, I think they are. Eye cups are all chipped, right? And they're in bad condition. Now bear in mind, you're gonna be putting these up to your eyes. You don't want to be putting jagged bits of plastic up towards your face. One of the things that I did do, and I never knew it actually fitted, was let me just get this out of the way. I've got a set of these. These are marked Glasses Moderating Binoculars Number One Mark One, and what they are are a set of lenses. They're eh, not lenses, filters that fit onto the lenses. Right. So if you have one that's chipped or cracked in any way, right. Pop this on. Right, it's going to cover that, make it look presentable, and it's not going to cause a danger to your eyes because there's no sharp edges. And that's what I've done with this pair. Right, this this has four sets of these filters in it. This little box. Right. Right, so there's four in there in total. Okay, so I've put two on there because those two were chipped, but it had the best, um, the best magnification, clearest lenses, nice, nice clear graticles. Uh So I wish I had a, a few more sets just, just in case I find some binos that are chipped again. Is the other one? I'll just leave that. Uh, but what these do is they, they, they give the the lens. Oh, sorry, they, they they give the view a sort of nice yellow tint, and it makes everything look quite clearer. So good for on days like this when the sun is just beating in, which is quite unusual for Glasgow. Trust me. What was the other things I've got? Oh yeah. Right, these were the sort of oddities that came with the box. As I say, that there's about three or four sets that I picked up. So you've got these ones, like your little opera glasses. Little dinky things like that. These ones, which... I think they're quite interesting, actually. You know, you, you've got the focus wheel. You know, and the focus right in. But then you've got the different views in the middle. Just there, it's marked. Uh, is it marine at the front? It's so obviously for a sea view. You turn it that way, and it's a field view. And you turn it that way, and it's a theatre view. So it's a 
Unusual set of binoculars. I don't know when they date from. I'd say they obviously the early part of the century. The sort of 1910 maybe, around about that period. And also got this set. I mean these have had a bit of rough and tumble, there was a bit of damage. Obviously dinged at the side of the eyepiece. Or the eye cut there. Um but I've noticed the magnification magnification on these aren't too great. It's, it's almost like twice magnification. It's really poor. And then let's put that to the side. I've got this set. I mean these are made in what Paris as well? Yeah, made in Paris. They don't have any cross foot marks on them. Um and the, the covering was all missing, so I've rewrapped it again with this brown leather. Tried to make them look a bit sort of presentable. And the optics on these are really clear as well. I think the whole box, I'd say there's about five, five sets of binoculars in total. And I think the guy wanted about 15 quid, and I asked him if he would take a tenner, and he said yeah, and he just gave me the box of binoculars. And I walked away with, let me see, where are they? I've got six pairs. I've got all these for 10 quid. <laughs> so, if I was you, I'd get down to your local market and have a browse. Have a good old rummage around, because you're going to find stuff that's exactly like this. Anyway. I've prattled on long enough. Uh, as I say, I was a bit bored this afternoon after I got in from work, so I thought I'd have a look around and see what I had. So hopefully you found this interesting. Right, thanks for watching. Right, bye.